welcome students myself dr monica khetarpal associate professor dungar college bikaner in my lecture series of msc final physics we were discussing ginzburg landau theory of superconductivity this ginzburg landau theory assumed that free energy of a superconductor it can be expressed in terms of a complex order parameter psi this complex order parameter this is equal to 0 when temperature is above tc that means it has no significance when the material is in normal state now we are taking temperature to be less than tc then for this temperature this order parameter will be non zero that means it has a definite value its square is related to the density of superconducting carriers which are electrons now ginzburg and landau they assumed that this free energy is fn plus alpha psi square plus beta psi 4 upon 2 plus this term is the kinetic energy term in the presence of magnetic field and this term last term is the magnetic field term here fn is the free energy of normal state alpha and beta are constants q is the charge this is the charge of two electrons that means q equal to 2a a is vector potential b is the strength of magnetic field mu0 is magnetic permeability in vacuum this was the expression that was assumed by ginzburg and landau when he considered that higher order terms of psi are ignored now we will derive two important lengths that are coherent length and london penetration depth using this ginzburg landau theory for this purpose initially i am taking that this kinetic energy term and this magnetic field term that means field dependent terms they are assumed to be zero so we are left in this condition only with the first three terms that is fs will be equal to fn plus alpha psi square plus beta psi 4 upon 2 now i am minimizing my free energy with respect to psi or we can say minimizing the free energy with respect to psi square minimizing means <coughs> differential of fs with psi must be equal to zero here this term contains no function of psi so its differential will be zero from the second term doing differential i get 2 alpha psi and from this term i get 4 beta mod psi square psi upon 2 simplifying this i get by taking psi to be common alpha plus beta mod psi square equal to 0 now we can see from this expression that there are two solutions of this equation the first solution being psi to be 0 and the solution second solution can be obtained by putting the bracket term to be equal to 0 now the first solution which is psi equal to 0 that means order parameter equal to 0 as we have already stated that this complex order parameter it is 0 when the material is in normal state so this condition psi equal to 0 corresponds to a state 
when the temperature is greater than Tc. Hence, this solution is not possible for superconductors. So, we have to take another solution, that is second solution. From the second solution, we have alpha plus beta psi square equal to zero. This solution is valid in the superconducting region, temperature T less than Tc. From here, I get mod psi square equal to minus alpha upon beta. As we know that psi square, it corresponds to the density of superconducting electrons. And density cannot be negative. So this psi square will be positive only for other condition. If beta is positive, then for psi square to be positive, alpha must be less than zero. That means alpha must be negative. So I'm writing my psi square as taking mod, mod alpha upon beta. So we have two temperature range. One is below Tc and one being above Tc. This parameter alpha, it is assumed to be temperature dependent. Let its value alpha, which is temperature dependent, to be alpha zero T minus Tc. Now, initially I am taking temperature greater than Tc. If T is greater than Tc, then in this condition, what will be alpha? It will be positive. That means from this expression, since alpha is positive, beta is positive, what will be the value of psi square? It will be negative. That means mod psi square will be negative. But we know that psi is a complex number. And its magnitude, what will be the magnitude of a complex number? It will always be zero or positive. It cannot be negative. So only psi equal to zero can solve the GL equation when temperature is greater than Tc. That means order parameter psi is zero in the normal state. Now I am taking my temperature less than Tc. That means in this state, the material is superconductor. From here, I am having T less than Tc. So what will be alpha? It will be negative. Negative alpha means that psi square will be positive. And this is the condition that is valid condition. So psi square, which denotes the concentration of superconducting electrons, it is positive when alpha uh, is negative in this condition. So I have value for T less than Tc, alpha to be negative, then psi square will be positive. That means mod psi square has a value minus alpha zero T minus Tc upon beta. So from here, I have determined the value of mod psi square. Now I am moving to my free energy term. I am substituting the determined value of psi square. I am taking the minimum condition. That means the difference between the free energies of two states, superconducting state and normal state will be Fs minus Fn in a minimum condition is alpha psi square beta by two psi four. Substituting the value, mod psi square we have determined minus alpha upon beta. Here I have substituted minus alpha upon beta. This is the value of mod psi square, but here we have psi to the power four. So 
what I have to do here it squaring it I get the value of difference between the free energy of superconducting and normal state as minus alpha square upon 2 beta. So from here Ginsburg Landau theory this theory predicts two important lengths of a superconductor. The first characteristic length is the coherence length. In my previous lectures, we have defined coherence length. Coherence length is the length up to which two electrons remain correlated to form a Cooper pair. And coherence length has a formula under root h cross square upon 2m mod of alpha. This is for the normal phase. But we have to determine the characteristic length in the superconducting phase. That means for the temperature T less than Tc. The difference in these two expression is here there is a factor of 2. But in the superconducting phase, there is a factor of 4. And the second characteristic length is the London penetration depth. The London penetration depth is under root m upon 4 mu 0 e square psi 0 square. As we have stated that psi is the order parameter. What is psi 0? Psi 0 is the equilibrium value of order parameter when there is no electromagnetic field. So putting the value of psi 0 in terms of beta and alpha, I get this term. So from this Ginsburg and Landau theory, we have obtained important two lengths that are coherence length and second is the penetration depth. This penetration depth follow the exponential law according to which when we place a superconductor and on its surface, we are applying a magnetic field. Let the value of magnetic field be B0. Then it is found that this magnetic field decays exponentially inside the superconductor up till a length which is termed as London penetration depth. And the exponential variation of magnetic field with distance, let it be along x axis, is given by b equal to b0 exponential minus x upon lambda. These are the two important characteristic lengths which were determined by Gisberg and Landau. Now, the ratio of these two factors, these two lengths, lambda upon xi. It is termed as Ginsburg Landau parameter and it is denoted by kappa. Kappa is lambda upon xi. This kappa is a dimension lens parameter as it is a ratio of two lens. So it is a dimension less parameter and it is also independent of temperature. This kappa determines whether the superconductor is type first or type second. For types first superconductors, we have kappa less than one by root two, and it is positive. And for type second superconductors, we have kappa greater than one by root two. What are type first and type second superconductors? Type first superconductors are the superconductors for which Misner effect is totally followed. That means if we place a superconductor inside a magnetic field, then in the interior of superconductor, B will be zero. But there is a difference between type first and type second superconductors. 
in type second superconductors when they are placed in a magnetic field up till a particular magnetic field let it be hc1 b will be zero inside the superconductor after that there will be a penetration of magnetic field up till the higher critical field hc2 that means in this case misner effect is not totally followed this is the difference between type first and type second superconductors so now we have classified type first and type second superconductors on the basis of ginzburg landau parameter for the superconductors for which kappa is less than 1 by root 2 they are type first and for superconductors for which kappa is greater than 1 by root 2 they are type second superconductors so students this is a very important ginzburg landau theory it is mathematical theory which is used to define the superconducting state and from this we can derive an important we have derived an important parameter that is ginzburg landau parameter thank you students for watching